Oops. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, but, you know, the, this field of artificial intelligence is very broad and it doesn't always involve machine learning. Machine learning involves these statistical paradigms to learn from historical data. Deep learning is particularly using neural networks to do this. And natural language processing is a broad field that may or may not involve artificial intelligence. But at the confluence of na natural language processing, computer vision and deep learning is where we have our generative AI coming in. Right. And, um, you know, it's been around for a while, but in the general form that it exists today, uh, it, 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 you know, it hasn't existed in the past, right? So let's just define these two words here, which will be very useful for in the future. Uh, narrow AI, you know, AI that's designed for specific tasks, requires specific training data, and mm, comes up with narrow models. And general AI, which is something that has general cognitive ab abilities uh, and uh, can be applied for a wide range of problems, so broad that we've got to use strategies to rein it in so that in one example it doesn't blurt out the answer to a student inquiring about a question on an assignment right but assist them uh, in an intelligent way um so i have some history uh, relating to uh, natural language processing which uh, we can come back to but the idea of transformers really came about in 2018 right and for those of us who've been working in this research field you know it was initially applied for semantic search engines and uh, i applied it for making dark web search engines for the office of director of national intelligence and um you know, uh, document triage processes for language agnostic understanding of communications and, uh, um, you know, uh, national interest related contexts and so on. But that's been happening for a while. But being able to j converse with these models is where, uh, you know, all of this new stuff has happened, right? And this conversing idea is really boils down to this one word of autoregressive modeling. Basically, what a transformer, the T in GPT is transformer, right? Um, does is this it, all it's doing is trying to predict the next word based on the context of the previous words in a sentence and this idea of sequential data processing is what makes these models auto regressive and um you know the dependency of the next word on the previous words is what eventually has been captured by these attention heads which are very specific innovation that came out in a paper uh, released um uh, called attention is all you need in 2017, which has formed the basis of this entire field, right? So it's really burgeoned out from 2017, right? Uh, you know, there are models that encode text and form uh, representations that are useful for search engines. And there's stuff that can decode representations or fixed length numerical representations of text and come back with like new text. And really the decoder type models are what we have been privy to today um, through chat GPT and so on, which can take uh, which can really generate text like, a, a, you know, in our language, in human-like language, right? And it's really hard to tell um, what's a GPT-generated model and not, right? And so let's do a little little fun exercise here, right? So I'm going to show you a couple paragraphs, uh, one uh, which is generated one by... One minute Jackson. warning. Whoops, okay, this is one minute warning. So I'm gonna skip through this part and then show you a quick demonstration of what we can do generative AI, right? So let's say that I have um, this particular URL, which has my coursework. I have, um, you know, I'm gonna index this uh, coursework, right? It's reading all the coursework dynamically from the repository. And then I'm going to be able to ask it a question about something that I'm, I care about. So let's say I, as a student, am interested in understanding this particular uh, script um, called runsepalenk.r, right? I could ask it a question uh, on very specifically this particular piece of uh, text, right? By just... Um, you know, connecting with it. Now, the whole idea is that <clears throat> I need to uh, make sure that the app is, uh, you know, just refresh because I was not on the active screen there. But um, let's give it a second. Uh, so I really hope this live demo uh, works out in the one minute that we have. <laughs> but um, you know, so it's it's this is the I use Lightning.ai as a way to host this application. Strongly recommended. For those of you all who want to try to do this sort of thing yourself, and I'm happy to help uh, with the programming uh, and that sort of thing as well. Um, if I might be able to just quickly show this, this would be really quite interesting uh, to, to see firsthand. And you can put in these safeguards to prevent the answer to assignment questions and so on uh, being in, you know blurted out by the model simply by changing a few lines of text 
inside uh, the prompt that you actually provide into the model. And this entire script is less than 150 lines, right? I mean, it's 190 lines. It's not a lot, and it can do a whole uh, lot of uh, work, right? So let me just quickly index this. Let's hope very quickly that we can index this, load an index, and then I'm going to ask it a question about this text, okay? So tell me about... Oh, I think I know why it's so slow. It's because, I'm sorry, but uh, what we'll do is let's open up the uh, two questions. I'm going to switch this to a GPU type environment and then be able to uh, kind of do this. But, you know, eventually what happens is we will index this assignment, uh, this entire set of course material, and then ask a question like, tell me about what's happening in the script. And it steps through the code one line at a time and explains what's happening, right? Now, persistent hosting and you know, has a cost to it. And so, uh, you know, that's something that we need to consider, but maybe I'll pause here and open to questions. And then hopefully as the questions come around, we will be able to see uh, the live demonstration. Okay, great. I, one of the first ones in, is there a yeah. course offered specifically for educators to learn to create their own AI tutors? We have I three minutes. To, <laughs> I would love to offer a course like that. I don't believe there is, but it is easier than you think. And, you know, literally in a two hour session with minimal programming skills, one can take these templated uh, development environments on lightning.ai in one example and create retrieval augmented generation paradigms where you can talk to very specific repositories of text, course material, and so on, and index it using cloud-based services so that you don't have to invest a single dollar on your own infrastructure. And for educators, you can get up to maybe sometimes 22 hours of GPU time per month free. You can get pretty much CPU usage for free and so on. So it is a very, very tractable ask um, to be able to learn and execute this in a very short amount of time. So we could probably make a little, uh, you know, a mini course or literally a seminar or a webinar to be able to get up to speed on how to do this. So would you be recommending that maybe the IT faculty at a university act as train the trainers, or is this all on the back of the faculty to teach themselves? No, I think it's uh, on the back of, let's say, um, folks like myself um, working in IT and also, uh, you know, faculty in computer science and data science uh, to be able to create um, little tutorials that will enable uh, the folks who aren't, you know, strong programmers to be able to uh, self-serve with regard to the use of generative AI, right? And um, that is um, easier than you think. And it's it's a matter of being able to charter that into University of Maryland's uh, fabric with regard to how we adopt generative AI uh, for our faculty body. Um, we have a question here about Harvard having developed a special AI assistant on its own to answer the questions from students. Perhaps we also might need one to answer the questions from faculty to get them up to speed. But is this an appropriate way for the University of Maryland or one of our colleges at like Montgomery College to get their faculty up to speed. Uh, is I'm sorry, I didn't quite follow. So is what a method uh, to help the, get the faculty up to speed? Harvard is? has a CS50 class, a uh -huh. special AA assistant that can answer questions from students um, about how to do all this and to answer questions from faculty. And so the question is, is this something we should be encouraging our yeah, universities I mean, to do? Intuitive programming is is interesting, right? But it's not so you know so important today. So just to give you a quite quick idea, I mean, how, how okay. difficult is it to code? Like, let's just talk about this, right? If I wanted to write a piece of code today, do I need to learn to program? Probably not. I just need to use a generative AI model. For example, write me a Python program to add two numbers, right? Now, I don't need to write the code. Uh, it, it already is going to, um, you know, say, um, provide me the answer. So if I just say, say, def, add numbers, right? That's it. It's already writing the code for me, right? And it's prompting me to do this. So with minimal actual programming knowledge, you can generate code um, because of the fact that uh, things like Microsoft, uh, GitHub Copilot and so on are fairly integratable into 
integrated development environments like Visual Studio to do cool things like this. Now, if we went back to this particular demonstration, right, and I wanted to ask a question about regress dot sepal link or whatever, here you don't really need to be a programmer at all, but then you could just index your repository of data or your code or whatever you have and say, tell me about. Sorry, my keyboard is sticky. Okay it will actually go through the repository and ask you the question. So I didn't need to be a programmer to actually access this knowledge, right? And it is telling me immediately. In fact, it is not even using ChatGPT. It's using a local language model, which was released last week called Llama 3, which is completely running on this virtual machine, right? Now, if I ask it, step me through this code line by line with explanation. It will do that too, right? Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, it's it's really quite um, amazing. Well, in the sense we've that run out of time. Yeah. I know that it feels like it was a lightning event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we out of the technical. Thank you. Thank you for all the information. And I'll definitely reach out to you in the future. Thank you, brother. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. That was fabulous, fast, overwhelming, but fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry for the technical difficulty. They haven't tried to <laughs> yeah. too much in one little bit of time, but we managed to get it to work, which is good. <laughs> and then I got booted out.